Hello student, welcome to EPG Partshala. I'm Dr. Ashish, Scientist E from Institute of Nanoscience and Technology, Mohali. Today, we are going to discuss about the module that is design of nanostructure from nucleic acids under the paper nanobiotechnology. So after completing this module, you should be able to understand uh, the chemical toolbox to process uh, these different DNA or nucleic acids, different enzymes, how to, how you can actually cut pay, paste, like this, this is the requir required because if you want to build a structure, a nanostructure, it is very important to know what are the tool you have. So we would like, we would know about different enzyme like restriction enzyme for cutting the DNA or if you want to ligate two different fragments, we would like know what are the ligase. Then if you want to copy, you know, cut copy paste so it's simple like that restriction enzyme like uh, uh, ligase or, or poly, um, dna polymerase so this we'll get to know that is the first thing so we know about chemical toolbox of doing this dna processing and then we would actually now once we know that second thing we'll learn is that what are the different strategy to design this kind of dna or rna nanostructures with they will have a sticky end or blunt end so that the sticky end they can actually stick together with another uh, fragments with a sticky end and it can form different structure it can form uh, so normally dna is one dimensional right so if you can actually assemble dna such a way that you can actually get two dimensional lattice in two dimension or you can actually make something a cube or let's say a ball or a different kind of you know if you look at this we'll also look at towards the end dna origami like you know japanese they make very nice uh, three-dimensional structure with folding paper so like that can we do with dna so these are different approach or the strategy to make um, dna nanostructures so we will get to know about them and towards the end similarly we'll also look at one or two examples of rna nanostructures so first let us understand what is dna nanotechnology so far we all know from our biochemistry knowledge or organic chemistry knowledge that um, uh, this DNA they can um, a particular segment of DNA they can actually um, uh, code a particular amino acid okay and there are something called codons top codon so DNA has been looked by us it's like a genetic material but now what we are going to look at is that since DNA we have looked uh, we have seen in earlier module that um, DNA is uh, one particular DNA of, of let's say 20, 30 base pairs, they would be uh, having a length of around let's say um, 2 nanometer or so and um, so what we want to do is now, now using different DNA fragment, we want to do self assembly and we want to go in a bottom up way so that short nucleotides can be organized into a much bigger nanostructures and they, which are stable structure and in DNA nanotechnology this is very one good thing about it is that because of this base pairing and base pairing can guanine can only go with uh, cytosine right and adenine can go only with uh, thymine so it's very specific base um, base pairing so then sequence of bases is very important when you talk about this another complementary sequence because that completely uh, determines the structure formation so you can we can get very specific desired conformation and because of this um, you know this matching the correct matching pair base pair is energetically favorable otherwise if there is a mismatch then that is not energetically favorable so then what happens that nucleic acid that binds to each other in one particular conformation which maximizes the number of matched pair because it minimizes uh, the number of mismatch pair in other way right. so this kind of dna nanostructures this has huge applications and um, the field is still developing a lot of new applications are coming because one can do uh, one can actually make uh, di dna directed or rna directed assembly of nanomaterial and which dna where dna can act as a template okay and it can dna can also act as a scaffold for chemical reactions or single molecule analysis okay another thing is that this different dna nanostructure they can also act as a container nano container for drug delivery because dna is uh, 
this many of the DNA will be biocompatible and then um, there is this can be also used as an antimicrobial devices you can also use it um, in the NMR imaging you can use DNA for biosensing of uh, sensing let's say oligonucleotide or complementary sequences you can uh, also use DNA for compute com computing you know so and this is what is actually you are going towards which uh, Richard Feynman actually predicted long time ago that DNA can also be used as an you know storage material let's understand the chemical toolbox to process DNA now there can be different enzymes which are essentially proteins. there can be different enzyme like restriction enzyme ligases helicases so you can see here it's a double stranded DNA and if you have to cut this DNA double strand at a particular sequence you need restriction enzyme so restriction enzyme basically cuts DNA at a specific sequence now you can see the other structure where it talks about ligation of sticky unit so if you have two complementary sequence which are uh, sticking out from the cut DNA double strand and you want to join them together so you need some enzyme called ligases then ligase actually binds to that particular enzyme that binds to that particular segment of DNA and it repairs like that there can be a helicase enzyme which actually unwinds the DNA or there can be also we will also look at later what is the role of DNA and or RNA polymerase how do they make copies when we talk about polymerase chain reactions let's look at what is restriction enzyme so restriction enzyme basically cleaves DNA into fragments at or near a specific recognition site within the molecule that particular recognition site is known as restriction sites where the restriction enzyme binds normally these recognition sites they have something called palindromic recognition sequence so which is nothing but it reads the same in the reverse strand and as it does in the forward strand so if you look at the following example where you look from 5 prime to 3 prime end of oligonucleotide you have g a a t t c but if you look now the double stranded dna if you look the other strand which is in other opposite direction you will see it is actually running the same sequence so that's what restriction enzyme that can actually read and it binds to that particular segment and uh, and once it binds to that particular segment it can actually buy you can see there is a restriction enzyme that is called e eco r1 that actually cuts just after that uh, guanine moiety guanine and adenine moiety that particular phosphate bond there that actually breaks and uh, you can see from different chart and also from the cartoon that you know there is also a sticky end now this sticky end when they cut the sticky end which comes out protrude out from the dna double strand it has complementary sequence now you can look at in the table there are different uh, ends restriction enzymes and they actually recognize different uh, recognition sites and they also cut at different phosphate uh, sugar bond so when we are talking about joining DNA then we need this enzyme called ligase enzyme so what it does is you can see that there are two DNA strands one has this 3 prime end the phosphate group 3 prime end you have the hydroxyl group of the sugar and which should actually join with the dna strand at the 5 prime end of which we have the phosphate bond so basically you have to make a phosphodiester bond and this is where dna ligase actually binds and it actually repairs and form the bond this phosphodiester bond so if you look at this example you when you have a single stranded dna thing it can actually repair the single stranded dna and the double stranded dna it uh, you can see those you know cut section it repairs to form the ligase repairs to form perfect double stranded dna let's look at polymerase chain reaction which is very famous and uh, this is where dna or rna polymerase that particular enzyme is useful to make copy of dna this is sometimes it is important that if you want to uh, increase the sensitivity of uh, the system you need to have uh, in, instead of one particular dna you need to have thousands of dna so that actually increases the sensitivity of the system so that's why you need to uh, replicate that particular dna thousands of millions of copies of that particular dna 
So if you want to do this polymerase chain reaction, you need to have along with the particular DNA you want to copy, uh, you need that DA double stranded DNA. You need also all the mononucleotides. You need the DNA polymerase enzyme. And you need something called primer. Now, the primer would uh, actually have certain segments of the DNA strand as complementary, only certain segment, not the entire one. Now, what it does, now this entire polymeric chain reaction that has three different steps, and it these steps get repeated again and again. First step is the denaturation step. When you take this double stranded DNA, you heat it up. And heat it up to 90 more than 90 degrees then double dna double helix get denatured because of disruption in the hydrogen bonding and it forms single standard dna and in the reaction mixture you have now primer you can see the green or the blue primer they bind to that uh, segment of the dna wherever it finds complementary and then uh, you basically anneal so when you anneal the system heat and cool heat and cool at 50 degree and you keep it there so it forms this uh, dna double helix at that particular segment and then dna pol actually binds to that particular area and it actually copies it's like a xerox machine it actually keeps taking the mononucleotide and it keeps forming uh, the complementary strand and then um, that goes on in 72 degree and eventually you make also complementary strand of each of the dna strand with the mother dna strand and after that again you repeat the same procedure that means again denature this particular double helix and then again you go through annealing and elongation and you get to form so you can see after first cycle you can get two of the daughter dna strand after second cycle you get four like that if you repeating the cycle again and again you actually can get two to the power n dna fragments where n is the number of cycle you repeat so that actually exponentially grows so that is very special of the dna polymerase reaction now when we talk about structural dna nanotechnology it actually consists of combining these unusual dna motifs with uh, sticky end that we can actually cohesive hydrogen bonding interaction that the sticky ends can actually uh, join together and it can form dna double strand and you can see this example uh, by Professor Siemens group uh, they showed that they form again the BDNA with the sticky end and you can see the red part uh, that's in the crystal structure of the double stranded DNA the red part it shows joint part of the double stranded DNA sticky end so far we have discussed uh, one dimensional DNA formed by the sticky end but now if we need to know about this branch dna junction now in the branch dna junction you can see this is a stable branch dna junction which can actually be formed by four strands and if you look at some segment of strand one and strand two is actually complementary whereas the other part of the strand strand two that is complementary to dna strand three and they can actually form you know, this kind of branch dna segment and these junctions they are also known as uh, holiday junctions and uh, the, you can see the structure of the holiday junction they actually look mm, like the structure of this uh, rna secondary structure because of this uh, intramolecular loop and stem formation and on the right hand side you can see actual dna double helix of these four different color coded dna and you can see clearly the dna double helix how it actually forms this holiday junction this is a classical example of holiday junction formed by four different strand of dna where two of the strands are forming already dna double helix now when we talk about this uh, DNA branched junction, if this branch junction, they have uh, all of the branch segment, they have their complementary strand. You can see from here, it can be X, X dash, Y dash, Y. These are all uh, the sticky end coming out of the DNA branch junction. Now, they can actually form two dimensional DNA nanostructure and it can actually form eventually two dimensional helix because because of this uh, cohesion of these uh, sticky ends and you can see in the bottom there is an example which was in uh, published in science it shows this formation of 2d dna nanostructure using this kind of holiday junction uh, with uh, sticky ended complementary sequence and you can see from afm lower magnification a very nice uh, 
fiber like material however when you zoom this fiber like material you can actually see two dimensional lattice like net like lattice formation because of this uh, branch cystic end assembly so we have looked at how to assemble dna nanostructure into two dimensional lattice now let's make the system even more complicated we can actually uh, assemble this dna nanostructure in three dimension so how to do that so you, you see this is a uh, very nice approach where you take um, three different types of dna single strand and uh, they can actually step wise assemble now one of them can form already form this branched uh, junction and the combination of uh, all the three dna strand they can actually form three point star motifs so that that can be two different types of uh, three point star motifs you can see over there and the, now this three point star motif they they are acting as a primary building block and this building block at different concentration can gives rise to different dna polyhedra so if four of these molecule they come together and uh, they can form a tetrahedron structure and that can only be possible when you take this dna strand at around 75 nanomolar concentration much lower concentration you can form tetrahedron but 20 such three point star tiles when they come together then um, you can see you can form something like dodecahedron but see the concentration regime is different but at very high concentration you can see you can form this buckyball like structure you can see the three point star motif is little different for this one and you you need to have around 63 point star motif uh, to form this kind of buckyball structure so this is unique and this is concentration dependent now formation of these different dna polyhedra from these three point star tiles you can one can clearly visualize by afm or tm you can see here the afm images and you can see this very clearly the tetrahedron can be visible or dna poly other dodecahedra or buckyball is visible you can see the size of the different polyhedras are very different where tetrahedra is much smaller 10 nanometer the dodecahedra 24 nanometer and buckyball is something like 42 nanometer and in fact uh, they looked into the cryo tm at uh, they recorded uh, cryo tm at different uh, angle and then from there they did a single particle 3d reconstruction using computation they can actually build up the model and uh, the dimension of those model uh, that actually matches pretty well with the cryo tm or the afm images and uh, that was also uh, further verified by dls another microscopic technique we can see that dna can be really programmed to assembled into well defined regular polyhedra which can be used as synthetic nano container or three dimensional structural scaffold we already know about the term origami which is a famous uh, japanese uh, term and which depicts arts in three dimension so we can similarly just like origami and that is possible because of this presence of complementary base pairs and that makes uh, dna a very useful construction material now if you dna origami is a bit more complex process and if you want to perform your dna origami and the design involves normally five steps where the first two step you need to sit and do it by hand and then last three steps uh, you need to be aided by you know, the computer modeling so let's look at the first three step what we do is we first need to build a geometric model of the dna structure that will approximate the desired shape and you can see the cylinders now each cylinder they are they represent the parallel dna double helix and these uh, different cylinders they are joined together by a uh, something crossover region and eventually in the second example you can see that uh, the it has a um, scaffold crossover the, using this crossover you can have these crossovers where actually the dna twist can take place and eventually in the third place what you can do you can actually have the staple strand which you actually staple it and in the staple strand actually provides the watson creek complementary hydrogen bonding for the scaffold creation 
so thus if you look at uh, this dna origami shape if you want to idealize these three different structures so one is uh, the first one is a square like structure or a star like structure or a disc with three holes in it so first of all you have to make this uh, geometrical model which is um, and then you have to define this crossover region which is given by these different uh, color code and then you can uh, you can see the crossover regions and eventually you can actually fold the dna accordingly to get uh, this kind of afm image and you can see the afm image nicely matches with the the origami shape which intended to do so we have seen different nanostructure formation in two dimension and three dimension from dna similarly rna can also form rna nanostructures and one famous example of rna nanostructure is something called tectosquares which is also found in trna and this also uh, similarly it can have this uh, interest and uh, secondary structure formation and you can see that is that can be this a b c d different secondary structures and this secondary structures can actually in presence of magnesium it can form this something like a distecto square c shows the the three dimensional construction of the tecto squares and you can see tecto squares also have different four sticky end which actually can also join ideally it can form two dimensional that is structure here you can see formation of these tecto squares which can be utilized uh, into RNA nanostructures in different dimension. In one of the example here is that um, this nanostructure can be assembled in ladder form. You can see it on the left, or it can also have net-like structure where it can actually form two-dimensional lattice. This, if you look at the bottom, uh, the images that they are actually AFM images. The bottom ones you can uh, see is high magnification AFM image where you can see both ladder-like structure, and in the right case you can see the net like structure of two dimension lattice with repeated periodicity gap between the tecto square so if we look at the possibility of this dna nanostructure what we have seen for drug delivery we see there are um, uh, some important issues first of all this uh, when you talk about this dna you have this negatively charged phosphate backbone and what happens is that if you have to uh, permeate through the cell membrane now cell membrane is also having this uh, phosphat phosphatidyl choline uh, which are also so they can repel so in order to in order for you that you want to do a uh, drug delivery or drink uh, de de delivery through um, uh, uh, through the cells then what you have to do you have to compensate this negatively charged um, uh, negative charge of dna by adding some kind of transfection agent which actually can uh, eventually take the uh, nanostructure get inside now there are some superior feature of dna nanostructure first of all because of its specificity and forming this complementary base sequence you can actually have very predictable and very well defined structures and they they would be uh, of uniform size and shape that's number one number two is that this um, this dna uh, nanostructures they can actually have very high load of um, high capacity to uh, capacity of cargo loading and this uh, nanostructure can be very easily uh, internalized by the cell and in physiological condition this dna are stable mm. that's most important and uh, this ag ag again i am mentioning this dna have dna nanostructures they have excellent biocompatibility so let's look at uh, the application of this dna nanostructure in uh, drug delivery so here this m13 mp18 this is a dna long strand and that has been with the use of uh, annealing with the uh, staple strand can actually form two different types of uh, dna origami structure it can form uh, either tubular structure or it can form two dimensional triangular structure now so this if dna origami structures can be loaded with doxorubicin now doxorubicin can actually intercalate with the dna bases and it can taken up by these uh, structures and now this uh, doxorubicin you can see uh, more or less the tubular structure of dna origami or triangular dna origami structure to fm image you can see that they stay intact however when uh, they were taken on tumor cells the, it was shown that 
very high level of drug loading efficiency was first achieved and uh, there is a prominent cytotoxicity human breast uh, adenocarcinoma cancer cells this kind of doxor which loaded dna origami structures so definitely dna origami enhances the cellular internalization of the doxorubicin so if we summarize the timeline and progress of the dna nanotechnology it's all started with 1980s when uh, this dna double strand with the holiday junction scientists started to use the sticky end concept to form two dimensional or one dimensional lattice then came these three dimensional uh, dna cube or polyhedra and different kind of three dimensional structure then came DNA origami and then there the associated with it a lot of applications but so there has been a lot of uh, efforts on design initially but eventually it when it came in the recent time it's all about the aesthetics and the application driven design which got uh, the priority so let's summarize what we have learned so far from this module so first of all we have looked in detail the different cut copy paste tools in order to process dna different enzymes and if you have to then we learned about palindromic uh, uh, sequence how to how how do restriction enzyme they read that and eventually cut looked at different restriction enzymes so we know if we have to cut at a particular uh, position then which particular restriction enzyme you should take we also looked at ligase uh, enzyme and how ligase enzymes can be used to really um, heal the dna strand pcr is very important we we also looked at in that aspect uh, dna polymerase how it can copy these are important things because uh, if you have to multiply the dna nanostructure and you have to get a lot of it then you need to really do pcr now having done that having understood uh, you know the processing tools then we started uh, cutting those dna double helix into a specific sequence so that we can have something called sticky end and this sticky end then can be coupled to different uh, dna uh, helix with the sticky end they can come together and form nanostructure now then we also looked at this branched uh, dna double helix then uh, that can actually form these holiday junctions and these holiday junctions eventually uh, with a sticky end can form this two dimensional helix then we looked at more uh, the going and we also looked at these uh, three point star uh, tiles a motif so that we can actually fold the entire dna uh, uh, these nanostructures or into three dimensional polyhedra it can be cube it can be tetrahedron so this is the strategy we have looked at lastly we we also looked at a very complicated three dimensional strategy you know, for complex designing you know, of dna origami and what are the approach how to go about it some basic idea we got about dna origami and lastly using uh, the same similar idea just like in dna we also looked at uh, the nanostructure designing from rna and we towards the end we looked at um, some example of this dna origami based structures uh, as nano container for drug delivery and how that can be uh, beneficial so i hope this will be useful uh, uh, for your knowledge thank you